right now in the senior center. Um, that one's in the works at this moment. We, uh, we've had a senior center that has occupied space in a federally owned housing uh, building for, for 40 years now. And that was put in there, that was supposed to be a temporary fix 40 years ago. We got a um, federal grant of $190,000. The council added $60,000 to it to invest in improvements to the senior center. And I think we looked at that and we felt that even though we might just put like $250,000 into it, it really didn't correct problems. And then what you have is an activity room or an apartment building wasn't designed to be a senior center, and you're kind of you're kind of depriving the residents of that building of an activity room, and you're really not making a very good senior center. We had asked the uh, board of ed three years ago because this problem didn't just crop up. When they were moving the high school to the new high school, what they were going to do with the old vocational agricultural building, they said they needed it, and it was not available. We asked them again last summer because it didn't look to me like much was going on there. Same answer. Somebody said, you know, St. Sebastian's closed its school and they've got their property on the market. My response was, yeah, but they want $1.3 million for it, right? I'm not interested in, in the $1.3 million expenditure to get that. And he says, why don't you see if it's negotiable? I said, I'm sure it's negotiable, but you know, if they're in that range, it's a little bit too high. Um, we talked to them about 800000 and they came, they said they would do the deal on, as long as it, on the condition that we could do a quick closing and that it would, uh, it, that there would be, you know, no contingencies. So, you know, we got that approved. It's the old Eckerson Hall School Building. It, uh, right now, Ron Clattenburg, Councilman Ron Clattenburg is the chairman of the building committee. They have selected an architect. That is moving forward. That will flow more than, uh, than increase the, uh, the space that allows for Eckerson programming. And it will also give us some space for uh, municipal offices that, that can be located there, which will solve the crowding problem in the city hall right now. So that's what's right on the horizon. I, I apologize, I couldn't hear you. Would you repeat the question, please? Um, are you planning to improve the business on the three middle term? Oh, this no, was, that was the last question. This had to do with civic. civic no, no, I apologize. What civic development projects do you intend to undertake? What civic development? Projects? Civic development. Civic development. Okay, thank you. I apologize. I couldn't hear. Um, I think we need to work on the riverfront, and we've begun the first step. We are now joining the Madabasis Sewer District. Now, why is that important to developing the riverfront? The reason is that right now we have our municipal waste treatment facility at the bend in the river that we call the Cope, and we can't get rid of that facility and actually develop the riverfront until we uh, tie into the Matabasa Sewer District, which we've just done on the council. We just recently voted to join the Matabasa Sewer District. And there is actually going to be a question on the ballot to pay this year to pay for uh, our first entry fee into the Matabasa Sewer District. And I would urge everyone here tonight who's voting, regardless of party, regardless of which of the two of us you, you pick, we both agree on this issue, please vote in favor of approving that, that uh, bond. And the reason that I say that is that I do, by by approving that bond, we're going to be able to get into the Matabasa Sewer District, upgrade their facility, and tie into their facility, and immediately deconstruct and open up, well, not immediately, but deconstruct and open up our riverfront for development. And I see down there uh, potential for so much growth. Uh, I can imagine restaurants, a boardwalk, shops, maybe an ice cream shop, an outdoor amphitheater for use by the arts community, some open space, and there are miles of riverfront that we can work on developing. There could be homes. Uh, there could be bike trails, there could be walking trails, there is tremendous potential for growth in that area and I think that's something that we absolutely have to continue working on and uh, I'm, I'm very glad to say that the council voted unanimously um, to, uh, to approve that and I know that the mayor supported it as well and so we're all on board with that and I want to urge everyone in the community to support that and vote in favor of it because this is a, this is a, a massive project that will do wonders for the city of Middletown. And I think it's really important that we all get on board with it, that we all get behind it, and that we do our best to make it happen. That project, the, uh, the Riverfront Development Project, you know, Councilman Blue is correct that the first thing we have to do is, is be able to go into the Madabasset Sewer District. That is something that is, that 
every administration for the last 20 years has been working on getting done. We finally got over one big hurdle. Senator Suzio is in the audience. I know when that legislation before the Senate, I believe it passed unanimously in the State Senate and passed virtually unanimously in the State House. But whichever of us is elected on November 8th, I don't see, whenever, whenever our administration ends, I don't see that that, that, prop, that riverfront redevelopment project is going to be completed. But we can make a start. We can make a start. Mr. Drew, what are your plans for improving safety in the city of Milwaukee? Thank you. Um, one of the, well, the first thing we need to do is appoint a police chief. And uh, I think we need to open up a search for a new police chief. I think at a minimum it should be a statewide search. And once we have a new police chief in place, I think we need to grow the size of the department. We should be at about 120 officers. I think right now we're sworn, we have 102 authorization for sworn officers. Uh, we put money in the budget this year to hire additional officers and to hire additional firefighters. And uh, one of the things that we need to do after that is improve our community policing program and our foot patrol program. Uh, I would like to see more police on foot in the North End. I'd like to see more police on foot patrol on the North End of Main Street, all of Main Street, but particularly on the North End of Main Street so that we can continue to grow and develop Main Street north of Washington because that area still is in need of a lot of work and has a tremendous potential there. Uh, recently, the city was reorganized into policing districts that made uh, coverage uh, more efficacious by the police department and I think increasing the volume of officers we have will uh, do a lot in terms of uh, helping us reach uh, the level that we need to to adequately respond to all the needs of the people of Middletown. I also think that we need to work on accreditation for the department and ensure that we can achieve the highest professional standards available. And uh, the biggest thing, though, is increasing the size of the department and starting with a search for a new chief who will have the confidence and the trust and the respect of the men and women of the Middletown Police Department. In terms of, of, of public safety, when, um, when I appointed Lynn Baldoni, police chief, the first thing she did was bring to my attention that at that time we were under 100 authorized training. She said for a city this size, approximately 50,000 people and 42 square miles, we should be about at 120. So we began kind of a systematic approach to increasing that. And so far we've done, I've always put in at least two officers, the council has found the money to go to the third, and I applaud them for that every year until we get to that 120. Another thing we need to do is we are going to be getting, if the, if the federal government can ever get around to cleaning it up, the, what was the old U.S. Army site on my land? That would become uh, a fire station and a fire training school. The state will build that fire station for us as part of the fire training school. One of the reasons we need that is the response times out to that end of town from the firehouse right here adjacent to campus is much slower than I would be comfortable with. So in order to get a fire station out there, that will improve everything. There are three schools right near where that fire, sta that fire station will be. There's a residential community adjacent to it, uh, mostly populated by seniors. They're very interested in having a firehouse close to them. The problem with the site is there are trace, trace contaminants on it. Now that's the good news is there are only trace contaminants on it. The bad news is because there are only trace contaminants on it, it's not real high on the, on the federal government's priority list. And, uh, they've got much more contaminated sites that they need to clean up before they get to this one. But that's going to improve a lot of things in the west end of town. Um, in, in terms of, of stability on the police force, you know, Councilman Drew is right. We need to get on, on the search for a new police chief. That is something that uh, I think we need to leave until after election day. Whatever happens, there's going to be a new council. Um, there are going to be new faces on the common council. We should, this administration and this council should not find the future one. So, fortunately, that's coming pretty quickly. But, uh, those are things we need to do. But it's also got to think of fire, we also have to think of emergency management. We have a great uh, emergency management operation that's staffed by volunteers. They really came through first on the working. And you know, more people can volunteer for that if they'd like to. We also have a medical reserve staffed by volunteers as part of that emergency management operation. 